hello. Welcome to podcast number nine of The Normal Intuitive. My name is Nancy. Thank you for joining me. For those of you joining me for the first time, thank you very much for giving my podcast a try. I am a psychic medium in New England, and I have a website, www.one-question.net. That's one spelled out. I'm over on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash one question at a time. That's one spelled out again. And I say the one spelled out because on Instagram, it's the number one question at a time. So that's where you can reach me on all the social media channels. I'm not on Twitter yet just because I don't feel like you care to hear my observations, random observations of mom and psychic any hours of the day. But if I really feel like everyone's interested, then I might give it a shot. And speaking of that, today I'm going to talk about a little bit of a heavy subject, so I apologize. Usually I'm pretty lighthearted, but I'm going to talk a little bit about depression and self-doubt and all that fun stuff. But before we begin, we always start every episode with a mom confession. So for those of you following on my Facebook page and on my personal Facebook page, as you know, my wonderful rescue black lab, Abby Uh, got into a little bit of a a tussle with my other dog last week and needed stitches. Well, she busted those stitches on Sunday night, and we had to take her to the vet on Monday, who could not get her in until Tuesday to put her down. I will not put her down, but sedate her to get her more stitches. Well, the problem is, is that Abby is a typical lab, super, super playful. She's just over a year, and she will not sit still. So yesterday, when they tried to sedate her, I kid you not, they gave her like a full major shot of this sleepy drug, and I swear to God, she fought it. She is just like me. She was so, she's so wanting to be in control, and she was trying to stand up, and her poor back legs were not working, and um, anyway, it was, it was a lot, and so they ended up giving us gabapentin, which I, if some of you are familiar, it's used for like restless leg, and it's pretty a major, pretty major drug, and so they gave that in addition to another anti-anxiety drug for her, which, by the way, hasn't worked. So I figured, okay, let's try this gabapentin this morning and the anti-anxiety drugs. This is what the vet said to do, and this should calm her down, right? Because I know that gabapentin can really knock you on your butt. So I'm thinking, okay, this is great. I give it to her this morning, and I swear to God, she has been running around the house. She is like another child. So the vet calls to check on her, and I say, this dog is not affected. We have, we've given her a major anti-anxiety drug and gabapentin and she is still not slowing down. So I hear the vet in the background just cracking up like what next? So they have to give us another like huge major thing to knock her out because essentially she has to stay calm enough for the next week for her stitches to heal. And the problem is, is she's so excitable that We can't find anything to knock her out so far, but we have to get her drugged up. And unfortunately, nothing is working. So I have to go back to the vet this afternoon to get her something else that the vet thinks will really knock her down. But it's, it's just, this dog is just hysterical. And that's not my mom confession. It's just like the headaches that I've been going on. You might hear her. I actually have my recording studio in the car and they are inside barking. But anyway, so yesterday... I I could not take it anymore. As some of you know, I suffer from a rare type of tachycardia and I cannot or I should not have sugar. It messes way too much with my heart. And so I I live and I eat very clean for my heart condition. But yesterday I snuck out two of my kids um, um, like fruit snacks and I snuck eating them like they were Skittles while we were watching TV last night, and then I stuffed them in the couch so that if my husband found them, he would just blame the kids. So that's my mom confession. I ate fruit snacks, and then I'm going to blame it on the children so I don't get uh, I don't get lectured for why I shouldn't be having sugar. But I was at the point, like I rarely drink, but I was just at the point where I'm just like, you know what? I need something. I really don't drink. Alcohol affects me really weird, again, because of my heart. And we don't keep a lot of sugar in the house because I can't have it. And I was just like, I'm done. I need freaking something. So maybe I should take what Abby is taking. I don't know. But it's like I I had to have it. And actually, to be honest, it was two fruit snacks 
during the day and then two at night. So I had four packages of fruit snacks, folks. And I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but for someone that like cannot have sugar or should not be having sugar because of medical reasons, that was like a big no-no for me. So that's what's going on in my life. And this leads me to the topic today of depression and self-doubt and just being honest with ourselves. So I know a lot of you as clients, when I talk to you, you're not in the best space. A lot, you know, not, you know, there's so little people. So, so I'm sorry, I just got a message. There are so few people that come to me when their life is amazing, because if your life is amazing, you're already working on that pronoia and you already know that, you know, everything is good and you're not worried about what your aunt thinks of your new haircut, or you're not worried about that next job leap. And so when you come to me, you are struggling or you need some guidance. And I love doing that for you. But what I'm finding with all of my clients is we're all struggling with something. All of us are struggling with something and we all have regrets and fears. And when I read with you, I am, I'm really, I take that on for you. And I kind of, I try and pull it over to me and then I'm working, working on the key is the key word on releasing that for myself because you know, in the beginning when I was reading for people, I was just taking on all that emotion and I didn't really have that, that place to let go. And then last week, something very obvious, I just realized I should just ask God to let it go. So I've been working on that, but it's huge. And depression and anxiety are, they run in my family, but it's really huge, especially with people that are empathetic, that are intuitive, it really brings a lot of your own sadness because you are feeling what other people are feeling. And because of this, I, I, well, there's another story about, I was on a lot of things when I was a teenager. And then I really just tried to live a very clean life for about a decade, a couple decades. And in the last year I decided to accept help because I needed it, especially New England with the seasonal affective disorder. So anyway, I went and now I am on Effexor and I've been really happy with Effexor. I feel like it's been helping my depression, but it doesn't help all the time. And this past winter, it was just dark all the time. And to be honest, it's still pretty freaking dark in New England. We wonder where the sun is. And so I actually went and I asked my doctor for more. And I suggest with a few of you, and I, and I will suggest if I feel like the universe or God is, is telling me to suggest to go talk to your doctor about medication. And it's never a weakness to go and ask for help to ask to be put on medication. Just because you go on something like a Fexor or Paxil or Prozac or whatever it is, it doesn't mean A, that you're going to be on it forever. B, it doesn't mean that you still can't do a lot of what you want to do as far as eating and drinking. Like I know, I know with like certain medications, you're not supposed to drink, but honestly, if you really talk to your doctor and like, Hey, can I have a glass of champagne once in a while or whatever? It's generally going to be okay. But of course, talk with your doctor. I am not a medical professional in any way, but all I'm saying is too, it really doesn't have to affect your lifestyle so much. Another concern I hear of that people, why people don't want to go on a medication is that they don't want to gain weight. Well, here's the thing is, would you rather gain five pounds, which by the way, is not like a definite that you are going to gain weight when you're on a antidepressant, antipsychotic, whatever. There's no guarantee of that. But even if you do, would you rather feel better and not like yell at your kids so much and be, you know, just feel better about things and maybe weigh a few extra pounds? Or would you rather still be miserable? Now, to be fair, I think the majority of you would probably say, well, I'd rather be skinny because skinniness equals happiness, which by the way, it does not in any way, shape or form. Skinny people and even the more skinny you are, it seems like the more insecure they are because regardless, society has this viewpoint that women need to be ashamed of how they look regardless of how tiny or big they are, which is absolute crap. But with that being said, it should not stop you from getting help. So let's see, here's the third excuse. Well, you don't want to admit or you don't, you know, you don't want the doctors to know. If you're in the medical profession, which I'm not, but I've seen enough doctors in my day to know that they've seen everything. Doctors, nurses, you know, anyone in the medical field, nothing is really going to surprise them. Nothing. 
One of my favorite things to do is ask kind of like an odd question when I go to the doctor's office. And when I was at my new cardiologist appointment or new cardiologist um, last month, I asked the, the medical assistant that was helping me, they, she was weighing me. And I said, what's the weirdest thing that someone has done back here? And she said that one woman was so concerned with how much her weight was going to be, she took off all of her clothes to step on the scale. And I said, well, what did you do? And she's like, well, she said, I just looked the other way. But here's the thing. If you are so insecure about your weight that you literally strip naked in front of everyone, that's when you know there's more to that than meets the eye, like Transformers. That shouldn't be happening. It's, there's no shame in saying, I feel sad. We all feel sad. We all are working through hard stuff. And anyone that looks like they're having a perfect life, I am here to tell you as a psychic medium from my perspective, they're not. They are just struggling in different ways. When I read you, my focus is all on you. And when I'm talking to you, even via instant message, and I'm checking in with you, my focus is all on you. And then I step back from that. And I have my life. And I've just talked to you, and I feel these emotions, but now my focus is on my kids and my husband. And it's hard. And it's not like I'm living a double life, but because I can't discuss, because it's a contract between myself and God to not discuss what happens during a reading, it does feel like I have a huge part of my life. And it's hard to de-stress from that. I take karate and I really try to find things that make me laugh. In fact, that was my last podcast. And by the way, people are still laughing about that chicken. I had the bus driver cracking up this morning. So... It does help, but at some point, if we are still sad after a week or two, it's okay to say, I need help. And that's where I was last year, where I was just tired of yelling at my kids, and I didn't want my kids to have these memories of me screaming and yelling all the time, and I noticed that I was getting upset for things that, you know, it's not that big of a deal. If we're late to an appointment, okay. If we, you know, are late for a lacrosse practice, it's okay. Like all of these things in the end, like those, those things don't matter. And yet I know that I'm kind of reaching the end of my rope when I get upset about really just silly things. So I went to the doctor and I asked for help. And thankfully the doctor was really awesome about it. And I've had, I had a really good experience with and I, and I, and I get this medication through my primary care doctor. Some of you may need to go through a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Oh, I also have a therapist, but that's, you know, pretty much mandatory as a psychic medium because I need someone to kind of help me adjust to this, this new life that I'm leading as a psychic medium and still leaving, living this very normal life as a mom and a wife, but it's very challenging. And To claim that I don't suffer from depression or anxiety, it's silly. And it's interesting because last month really picked up as far as readings and clients and I was busy and it was like, go, go, go. And I didn't really have any time else to focus on anything else except my business. And for whatever reason, it's been really quiet the last few days. Like no one's booking, no one's contacting me and it's quiet. And I started to feel very insecure and it was interesting because I, and I know pronoia, I know that I need to do as I say, not do as I do or whatever. Like I'm not following my own advice, but I became very insecure because I was so used to being busy and all of a sudden I wasn't. And I'm just, you know, and then I had a couple of major cancellations of, I had an intuitive party that was canceled and then someone else canceled. And I just, I, and that actually, to be honest, led me to eat the couple of fruit snacks. Actually, it's been two days in a row that I've had. I know it's silly to be talking about like eating a bunch of fruit snacks, but A, when you are really not supposed to have sugar, B, it's bad. And B, like I'm obviously taking my emotions out on food and I know that, but it's like when you get so sad and I'm just like, I could not verbalize how I was feeling other than I just felt like what's wrong with me. Like, do people still like me? And, you know, I felt like Sally Field, like they like me, they really like me, except I'm totally insecure. And I'm actually the exact opposite of Sally Field winning the Oscar because I have, you know, it's interesting, like for the most part, I've gotten great recommendations and I have people that love me and then it kind of stops. And 
not that I need the, the, you know, the accolades, but in order to continue to work as a psychic medium, I need reviews or not. I need recommendations, but I also need referrals. And when you're not getting those referrals, you want 